Individual bonds are better than funds as they eliminate interest rate risk. Interesting. This is part four of our eight great misconceptions on bonds. Going back to the Alan Roth uh, article, I call it the bond masterclass and the advisor perspectives. All right, so let's go into this. Uh, many advisors and investors think building a laddered bond portfolio eliminates interest rate risk. That's because you know you're going to get your money back upon maturity, assuming no default. But remember, uh, in the example above, and this is where we well, let's just go. When rates rose from a four percent to six percent bond on a on a bond, newly issued bond, and one collected then twenty dollars less than the market rate of the six percent bond. So again, let me just explain what happened here. So had, you had bought a 4% coupon bond, a 10-year bond, thus you were getting $4 in interest each and every year. And over 10 years, you get $40. Uh, later on, another bond was issued at 6% coupon. All right, so you were getting $20 less in interest over the uh, maturity of that bond, essentially, assuming that they were issued close to the same time. All, right, it's all, other, things, all other things considered, no one's going to buy your bond at the same price they would buy the other bond. Why? Because the other bond pays 50% more in income. Again, assuming same par, same uh, maturity value, same issuer in terms of credit risk, all that. No one's going to sit there and say, Josh, I will buy your bond for 100 bucks for a 4% coupon. And then turn around and say, Sam, I'll buy your bond for 100 bucks for a 6% coupon. It doesn't work like that. They're going to pay less for my bond or conversely, they'll pay more for the other one. It's just that simple. All right. So what happens is, the net present value of that $20 loss shows up in the market value of the bond and holding it to maturity does not does nothing since the opportunity cost of collecting that lower rate. So basically you're saying, look, yes, it, you're, you're shielding yourself from interest rate risk, but are you? Because you, you, have, you don't have that 20 bucks you could have had, if that makes sense. I completely agree. Now, this is where it gets interesting. A bond fund like the Vanguard Total Bond Index is a ladder portfolio of, I mean, Thousands and thousands of bonds, 18,000. How could that be riskier than a ladder bond portfolio of a few dozen bonds? In fact, not only that, but if you, I mean, a ladder, to get a truly ladder bond portfolio is going to probably take at least $500,000. And how many people have 500000 that should just buy individual bonds? To the contrary, you get far more diversification, not to mention the ability to reinvest automatically. This is huge. With the individual bonds, the client must leave the cash earning whatever the interest rate is on the money market at that time until they have enough to buy another bond. So you get far more diversification, not to mention the ability to reinvest automatically. Well, that's not so true, though. You're not reinvesting automatically in the same bonds. And this is where I think a lot of people miss, don't understand this. So I'm telling you right now, people always make this argument with me. I say, look, you bonds don't compound. You don't get compound interest rate on bonds. They just don't because you're not reinvesting back in the same bond. What Alan is saying here, you can reinvest automatically into a, the plethora of bonds in this latter portfolio. But Vanguard is going out in the market and buying and selling brand spanking new bonds. You're not reinvesting into any of the individual bonds that are already in, owned in the portfolio. You're just not. If it solves that such a big deal, well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's a big deal if the interest rates spike up all of a sudden. Now you're reinvesting in higher, much, much higher interest rates. But it could be the big deal in the, comp, the, the, uh, the, the converse of that, where the interest rates drop. You're not reinvesting in those, in those previously issued bonds. It's, you can't reinvest in previously issued bonds in an in a ETF or an individual bond portfolio. But I think that's important to know with the individual, but at least when you have a bond mutual fund or ETF, the the uh, market or the bond, the, the manager, I should say, is actually managing that. So they're getting the cash, they're reinvesting it. And you know that even if you only have 50 bucks, it'll be reinvested and other bonds, I grant you. But still, at least that's not sitting there just idle. Whereas the individual bond, you can't do that. So you get enough to do uh, to buy a new bond at five, 10, 25 or $50,000. Anyway, just a great, great uh, insight again into uh, Alan Roth's, again, what I call the Bond Masterclass. Let me hear your comments.